How's it going everyone? It is Pangino here and in today's video we're going to be covering the ultimate CPU optimization guide for gaming and performance with inside of Windows. This works on both Windows 10 and 11, works on desktops, laptops, regardless of how high-end, low-end, old or new they may be. There are tons of optimizations in this video allowing you to achieve the best performance possible from your system and unlock the true potential of your CPU regardless of how good or bad your CPU is. We're going to be focusing on allowing you to achieve better multi-core performance, improving FPS across the board on any games in which you play. As always if you do enjoy this video and find it useful, please do consider pressing that like button and leaving a comment for the YouTube algorithm as it helps me out tremendously. With all that said and done, let's get straight on into the guide. With all of that and more coming straight after a message from today's video sponsor. Tired of seeing the Activate Windows watermark, built a new PC, or just want to own Windows at a major discount, head over to WhoKeys to purchase a Windows 10, 11, Home, or Pro OEM key at a major discount. Make sure to use code PAN20 for a further 20% off at checkout, where you can use a safe and secure payment method such as PayPal. Once your key is delivered, simply input the key inside of Windows and boom, you're now completely activated and own Windows forever. You'll now have access to all features and no more watermark. Thanks again to WhoKeys for sponsoring today's video. For the first basic setting, take yourself down to your task bar, right click and open up task manager. Alternatively, you can use control, shift and escape on your keyboard, head over to the startup tab. Every single application with inside of it, which is marked as enabled underneath status, will open automatically every single time you log in. Not only will this increase login times and PC boot times, but these programs will be automatically running in the background every single time you log in, taking up CPU cycles and resources. So to solve this issue, head over to any programs you know you don't need to automatically open. This doesn't mean that you won't be able to use the programs, it just means that they will not automatically open up. I can still use Spotify anytime just by simply opening it on the PC. Highlight and select a program you know you don't need open, head to the bottom right, then disable this. Move on to the next program and continue to do this for all of the programs you are confident you don't need open. Following that up with the basic typical Windows settings for the best gaming performance possible, head to the bottom left hand side, type game space mode, select game mode settings, ensure that Windows game mode has been switched on. Next up is a quick fix for those of you running on a Chromium based browser, whether that be Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge or Firefox, open up inside of your web browser, head over to the top right hand side to the settings icon, navigate down to the settings menu, on the left hand side select advanced, system and ensure that the continue running background apps when Google Chrome is closed section has been disabled. This is enabled by default and means that every single time you exit out of your web browser, all of your browser extensions and plugins will still run in the background soaking up CPU cycles and resources. Turning this option off will mean that every single time you close out of the browser from now on, every everything about the browser is completely closed and not running. And lastly, for the basic settings, we can navigate down to the bottom right hand side, click on our task icon tray and start by closing out of any and all programs you don't need open. And a common mistake people run into, if you are playing a game on Steam or Battle.net, you don't need every single game launcher open. Just take yourself to the bottom right hand side, right click on these applications you don't need running when playing your game and exit out of them. First of all, in the advanced optimizations for both Intel and Ryzen users, take yourself to the bottom left hand side and search for device space manager. Select device manager. Inside of this tab take yourself down to the S section and we're going to be looking for system devices. But inside of system devices you then want to find the high precision event timer under the H section. Right click on this option and disable this device. Now in many games, especially games in which you are already getting relatively high FPS on, you should notice a slight reduction to input latency and higher overall FPS. This is especially true for those of you running on Ryzen based systems as you could be seeing up to a 10% performance improvement in some games just from this optimization. If you find that you don't want this optimization kept or if you find that Windows is now sluggish or slow or performance isn't as good, simply come back with inside of Device Manager, right click on High Precision Event Timer and re-enable it. Next up we're going to be covering the ISLC or Intelligent Standby List Cleaner tool. I recommend this tool in practically every single one of my videos and that is for good reason. It's an incredibly simple, easy to use two-in-one optimization tool in which the main part will be able to clear out your excess system standby list and RAM usage, clearing up excess RAM being used in the background to ensure that you always have a RAM buffer. Simply use the link in the description down below or do a quick Google search. Once you're inside of this page, scroll down to the official download here section, select open, select the three dots, select your desktop, OK, extract. You'll then be met with the ISLC folder on your desktop. Go inside of the folder, then double click on the intelligent standby list cleaner.exe. You will then have to set up the program to match your system specs. For the first box, this needs to be set to 1024. The second box needs to be set to roughly half of your system memory, in which you can see for your PC in the top left hand side. Roughly half of that is going to be 16,000. On the right hand side, set your wanted time resolution to 0.50, then use your delete key to remove the other values. Enable the custom time resolution, head down 
to ISLC polling rate. For high to medium end systems, set this to 500. For medium end to low end systems, set this to 1000. And as you can see on my PC right now, I'm using 10 gigabytes of my standby list or reserved memory in the background. To use the program, simply select purge standby list, then hit start on the program. This will clear out the standby list and will auto clear it every single time it gets near to that 16,000. Minimize the program, leave it running in the background, and you're then good to go. Next up, we're going to be applying a quick Windows registry fix to ensure that we have a higher CPU and GPU prioritization when games are booted with inside of Windows. For this, take yourself to the bottom left hand side, search for reg edit, then open up the Windows registry editor. Head up to the main navigation bar at the top, highlight and select any and all information with inside of here, then hit backspace to clear this. Navigate inside of the description down below where you'll be able to find the registry path to copy and paste. The registry path should look just like this, highlight all the way from the right hand side to the left to where it says computer, right click, select copy. Head back inside of the Windows registry editor to the same direction bar, right click, select paste, then press enter. We'll then be booted into this folder. Under system profile, head over to system responsiveness in the top right hand side, double click and set this to a value of one. Select OK. Navigate down to the Tasks folder, then navigate into Games. Head over to GPU Priority, double click, and set this to 8. Select OK. Head into the Priority folder, set this to 6. Scheduling Category is going to be switched to High, which is a capital H, I, G, H, OK. And lastly, SFIO Priority, double click, and also switch this to High. Once that's been set, select OK. Exit out the Windows Registry Editor, and that optimization has now been applied. We're now going to be covering the BIOS section of this video. The BIOS section is not going to be for everyone, but for some of you that are wanting to jump into the more advanced settings with inside of your CPU to ensure that you are getting the best performance possible, whether you're running on an old, dated PC all the way up to the latest and greatest in gaming hardware, to ensure that you do have the best CPU performance possible with inside of your BIOS, there are two things in which we can do. First of all, for most of you watching, is enabling your XMP or DOCP memory profile. This will be the profile settings which will be printed on the RAM sticks in which you're installed to your system. And if this setting has not been set manually, regardless of how good or expensive your RAM kit is, your RAM kit will be forced to use the automatic Windows default settings where you'll not be getting any of that speed benefit. So make sure that those options are enabled or we'll see if they're even available to you. If you are on a slightly older system and seeing some system instability or are wanting to ensure that you have the maximum performance possible at all times and you're not too bothered about efficiency, then you may want to look into disabling some of the processor C states which are available with inside of the BIOS for both Intel and AMD. This will stop some of the power saving features where the CPU will automatically downclock itself upon idling, which can cause some instabilities, and disabling these will mean that the CPU is practically awake, ready, and good to go at all times. And lastly, if it is available to you, look into CPU overclocking and specifically all core CPU overclocking. You do have stuff such as PBO with inside of Ryzen or Intel Turbo Boost technology with inside of Intel, but I personally prefer to go with a manual all core overclock, as these will see the best performance improvements to multi core performance. Performance. We will have a video coming to the channel soon covering CPU overclocking and if that is something that sounds quite interesting to you and you want to stick around for that make sure that you are subscribed to the channel for when that drops. And we can now move over to physical optimizations in which we can make to the CPU and your PC. For the first if not one of the most important things in which you can do to maintain your PC especially if it's more than a couple of years old is to take off the CPU cooler or find someone that is educated enough to know how to do that and confident enough, clean out the old thermal paste, apply some new stuff because three to five years for most thermal paste this is typically when they'll tend to dry up and lose a lot of the efficiency of the thermal conductivity, resulting in much higher temperatures where you might even run into thermal throttling, which could be causing major CPU bottlenecking. Alongside this, make sure that you do clean out any extra dust with inside of the fan and just take around about an hour or so to clean all of that up. Next up is taking a look at the RAM slots, how many RAM sticks you have, and ensuring that they are installed to the correct slots. RAM is incredibly important for the CPU to run correctly, and this is one of the most common mistakes. For most systems, unless you're running on any of the platforms which are listed on screen now, you should be running an even amount of RAM sticks. If you're running an odd amount, such as one or three RAM sticks, you could be running into severe performance issues as you will only